it's Feral Inferno, and we're back with another collaboration. Today, talking about the Castlevania series. And the question that we're posed today is, what is the best castle in Castlevania? It was a question I've always kind of thought about, and you never really hear anybody talking about it. It's always like, hey, what's the best game, and what's the best sub-weapons? Is it better to have 2D Castlevania, or 3D Castlevania, or the Metroidvania? But nobody really talks about the castles. So, let's partner up with three awesome content creators and talk about what is the best castle in Castlevania. What's going on, Feral Inferno crew? It's Poger coming at you with a segment within a video. That's a first. So he hit me up and asked me what my favorite castle within Castlevania is, and this answer might be surprising to some, but I'm gonna go with Castlevania 3. But that's kind of an odd pick. Why Castlevania 3? Well, stay tuned, I'll tell you all about it. In the early years of the Famicom, Konami's games were very basic in nature. They ported over a lot of their arcade titles. But later on, Konami started getting the hang of programming for the Famicom. This is understandable. With any activity that you do multiple times, you improve each time. Konami would really try to get the most out of the console by producing enhancement chips. In 1989, Konami released Castlevania 3. It's a fairly linear platformer where you follow the path and fight a boss at the end. You can collect sub-weapons that you can use if you have enough hearts. Konami played it safe with this game. They didn't go with an exploration type game like Castlevania 2 and decided to go back to the original formula. However, the game has a few innovations that the others didn't. You now have multiple paths you can take, and there's other characters you can unlock during your journey. My favorite character was always Grant because he's the anti-Castlevania character. His jumping is actually pretty good, unlike the other characters, and his ability to climb objects does not use hearts. You can also skip a decent amount of obstacles by using his climbing ability. Having multiple paths and characters gives this game a lot of replayability. If you beat the game with one character, you can try again with another. The enhancement ship that they used for this game allowed for some cool effects that no other Castlevania game had. The Grim Reaper's second form used split-screen scrolling in order to achieve what would normally be an impossible task. The NES would not have been able to handle a sprite this large, so they found a clever way around it. The game also has vertical scrolling, which was not in the first game. The sky effect in some of the stages also looks very well done. This game is notoriously difficult. Everyone knows about the Medusa heads. It's so hard to hit them because of their unusual moving pattern, and they always find a way to get you. These little red enemies, whatever they are, are very annoying. If too many of them fill the screen, they deplete your life bar very quickly. Whenever you get hit, you get knocked back, which can result in a death if you're near a bottomless pit. So why do I pick this castle as my favorite? For one, you can't see the entire castle in a single playthrough because of the alternate paths. You have to play multiple times if you want to see the whole thing. The graphics were also phenomenal in some parts of the castle. And finally, we would hear some excellent tracks throughout the castle. It honestly sounds like nothing we've ever heard on the console. There's a reason for that. The game uses the VRC6 chip, which gives the game three extra sound channels to work with. You can do a lot more with eight sound channels opposed to the usual five. Unfortunately, Konami was not able to use this sound expansion in the US because the NES couldn't support it. Nintendo also didn't allow third-party enhancement chips to be used. So instead, Konami settled for the MMC5 chip, which was pretty powerful, but unfortunately did not support the sound channels. Outside of the music, the US version is mostly the same, but slightly harder. For example, Grant no longer has a throwing projectile, now he just has a short-range knife. But otherwise, regardless of what version you choose to play, this is a fantastic game, and it contains My Favorite Castle. G'day everyone, hope you're having a ripper of a day. Big Reese here. Today I'm really excited because we get to talk one of my ga favorite game series, Castlevania. In particular, my good buddy Feral Inferno has asked me what is my favorite castle in the Ga Castlevania series. And I had never really thought about the castles as a whole 
and which one was my favourite. So I really like this question, it got me really thinking. And when you think about it, the castles themselves are just a bigger part of Castlevania as any Belmont, and I really like that. Uh, and when you think about it, even the uh, castle from Castlevania 64 has its merit, so this was a really good question. But after a lot of thinking about it, I played through a lot of the games, well not played through all of them, but played, played through a fair portion of it to think about which was my favourite castle. I had to come down to my favourite castle from Castlevania was Dracula X Nocturne in the Moonlight, otherwise known as Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the Sega Saturn. And the reason I like this one, I know the port itself was criticised, it's got issues with frame rate dips and divvering, graphical issues, long loading times, but the castle itself is exactly the same as the PlayStation version. Uh, and I just like, apart from being a beautiful castle with all the, say, the, the awesome parallax scrolling and, that, and just looking really good, the castle itself, what makes it my favourite, is it just begs you to explore that castle. You always just look for that one room, look for that extra secret, uh, search around for any anywhere you missed. Every time I've played through Symphony of the Night or Nocturne in the Moonlight, I'm always just looking for that one little bit more. Uh, and I just absolutely love that once you finish the game, the castle flips upside down and you get, a, you get to play through it all again, but the castle is upside down. And I just really, really love that when the devs made the game they, and designed every single room, they thought about, they designed it in keeping in mind that the castle would be flipped upside down and you could play it through again. So you get to explore the whole castle yet another time, but from the upside down perspective. And so I just always really appreciated that about the game. I just love that. Uh, it was It's like a lot of times where you just think to yourself, you get two, two Castlevanias in one, but what makes the Saturn version my favourite castle over the PlayStation version is in addition to the castle everything the same as the PlayStation version you get several regions that are exclusive to the Sega Saturn uh, regions that aren't in the PlayStation version and hey more Castlevania is always good uh, it's actually possible to complete this version I think to uh, two, 209 or 210% uh, being that you play through the game, you explore all the new areas, and the castle flips upside down, and then you get to explore it all again. So if you're a completionist in that, you have to play the Saturn version. If you're concerned about the uh, the Saturn version with the issues I talked about with things like divering and frame rates and long loading times, there's some uh, modern ports or hacks of the ROM available out there that uh, have an English translation. Uh, I think the best version in my opinion, which I played through this last month after Farrelly asked me which was my favorite, I played it on the uh, Sega, the Emonic Arc, which is based on a Sega Saturn controller and it's a great device. Uh, play through that, I played a, a, a port of the game which used the, the uh, PlayStation Portable audio so all the uh, English translation that and then it also had the graphical issues fixed up uh, some of the long loading times and that uh, they can't fix in the ROM I think that's just embedded in the game but things like the divering and the frame race and that have all been cleaned up so you can enjoy playing the satin version Nocturne in the Moonlight my favorite version uh, you can't uh, the only problem is with this version you can't uh, moonwalk backwards up the stairs which I think you should just be able to do in every Castlevania game. Alright guys, uh, love to know your opinions. Thanks Harold for inviting me on this collaboration. I really enjoy it. It's really good fun. Have a good one guys. I'll catch you next time. What's going on everyone? It's the Matt Belmont here. Thank you so much Feral Inferno for including me in this collab. So I think that this is a fantastic topic to cover here. Castles in Castlevania and what my favorite castle is this is an awesome topic and as soon as feral inferno came to me with this i could not think of any castle other than the one in symphony of the night why is that well let's get into it now when it comes to the castles in castlevania i look at two different things how fun is it to explore and how well of a layout is it and what i mean by that is is every area of the castle thought out okay that's basically what i'm looking for here 
Are the areas in this castle well thought out? And is it fun to explore? And I can safely say that the castle here in Castlevania Symphony of the Night is the most well laid out castle that I have ever seen in my life, okay? You have all these different cool and interesting areas from the Marble Gallery to the Alchemy Lab to the Outer Wall to the caverns at the bottom of the castle. Every single location in this castle is well thought out, well laid out, and they're all very fun to explore because they ha all have their own secrets within them. And I think that that's really cool, you know? And not only that, okay? That's just the first castle, as you all know. If you don't, well, uh, sorry for the spoiler. Uh, you also have an inverted castle to explore in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So that castle has its own identity, but it has the exact same area. So you get an inverted outer wall, an inverted marble gallery, an inverted uh, alchemy lab, inverted literally everything, inverted caverns, everything. And it's so cool to go through all these different areas again, but from an inverted point of view, it gives everything a new look, a new feel, and it makes everything just feel fresh instead of, oh, it's just the exact same room, but you know, everything is uh, in different spots. No, it, it literally gives each room its own new identity in the inverted castle. That's what I love about this game is it was so well thought out that it's timeless. Everything about this game is timeless and it all is right here in this castle. And it's why I love going back and playing Symphony of the Night every single year because this castle is just so much fun to explore. Like, it, I could explore this castle a thousand times, which I have, and want to experience it a thousand more times, which I do. So, yeah, take that what you will. So that is why I think that Castlevania Symphony of the Night has by far the best castle in the entire franchise. Thank you so much again to Feral Inferno for having me on. I cannot tell you how grateful I am to be a part of this. Also, I'm looking forward to what everybody else has to say about this because this is such a cool, unique topic. With all that being said, I will see you in the next one, my fellow Belmont. So, what is Feral Inferno's best castle in Castlevania? This is actually a question, even though I was the one asking it, I actually had to really think about it and went back and forth several times. It's actually a lot harder than I thought it was, right? So you think about like, what's the actual best castle? One of my thoughts was going back to one of the games, the very first game that I beat in Castlevania series was Castlevania 4. Super Castlevania 4. <laughs> Which was in sense actually more of a remake of the first Castlevania. Uh, and I really liked how you could use the whip in this one. And it, you could use the whip so creatively. You know, you could swing around, use it in eight directions. But what did it for me was the Vanishing Bridge. That is the worst. The worst part of any Castlevania game. As good as Super Castlevania 4 is, I did not enjoy the Vanishing Bridge with the spears falling down and the, the, the floor of the bridge is vanishing like randomly. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> so I said, where do we have the most variety in a castle in Castlevania? And I had to go with Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. And I've talked about this on the channel before in one of my Game of the Year episodes. Because Castlevania Circle or Circle of the Moon. Portrait of Ruin. There's a moon on there, so I always think of Circle of the Moon. <laughs> but Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. Such a creative game. And a lot of variety as well in so many different ways. The story in Portrait of Ruin takes place in the era of World War II and is a sequel story to Castlevania Bloodlines. Like in Bloodlines, we can control two different characters. But unlike in Bloodlines, we get to explore Dracula's castle with both characters, Jonathan Morris 
and Charlotte Alwyn. Jonathan is your standard vampire hunter character, equipped with melee weapons. While Charlotte is much like Sypha from Castlevania 3, wielding powerful magical spells. Being able to control both characters and swapping in between battles and the castle made exploring the castle that much more fun. And if you had a friend who had the game, you could explore the castle simultaneously at the same time. But one of the main draws of Portrait of Ruin was what it actually borrowed from Super Mario 64. Just like in Super Mario 64, the paintings of this castle are an extension of the castle. So not only is the castle really fun to explore, but you've also got these other worlds that really give the game a different flavor and a little more variety than we, what we see in other Castlevania games. As someone who really appreciates variety when it comes to both gameplay and level design, Portrait of Ruin really was a breath of fresh air for the Castlevania series. The castle is beautifully designed with a nice blend of both pixel and 3D graphics. Like in Mario 64, the worlds within these paintings don't overstay their welcome. Once you're ready to go back to the castle, you're ready to kind of just go back to exploring that castle and find that next painting, just like in Mario 64 when you're opening up all those new worlds. Another thing about this castle, having two different characters, you get to solve different puzzles utilizing both characters, like maybe pushing a heavy object requiring both characters pushing at the same time to unlock the secret. Or maybe you need to use your partner as someone to leapfrog off of. Maybe there is a platform that's just too high to jump on your own. You can jump on the shoulders of your partner to get a little extra boost, kind of like how a double jump would work. This castle is host to a lot of cool bosses, characters, environments that are really unique to Portrait of Ruin and you don't see it in other Castlevania games. Now I know a lot of people have not tried Portrait of Ruin just from my own discussions with a lot of people. For whatever reason this was a game that a lot of people skipped out. Maybe because hey it didn't have that Alucard or, or Belmont in there. Maybe that was a part of it. I'm not sure. But a lot of people missed out on a really great castle with a lot of different variety. If you played a lot of Castlevania games and you skipped out on Portrait of Ruin or you just maybe missed out on it for whatever reason and haven't had the opportunity to play it, give it a shot. It'll definitely give you a breath of fresh air in Castlevania. Thank you so much for joining us on this collaboration looking at what is the best castle in Castlevania. And a big thank you to our three content creators, Big Reese, The Mad Belmont, and Poger for joining us on this collaboration and providing such awesome segments. Let us know in the comments what your favorite castle in Castlevania is. Is it from a more retrovania with maybe Castlevania 4 or maybe one of the NES Castlevanias? Or perhaps you like the Metroidvania castles. Maybe it's even a 3D Castlevania. Let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.